So now uh, we're on our way to the highest village in the Udong Mountains called the Husun. Basically, it means the lake village. And I just want to show you how tiny the road is. It's basically uh, the width of the car. Uh, we have to make a phone call to the village before we go up because uh, the people on the, in the village, because they're so high up, they have a clear view down the road and they can tell us whether or not there are any cars coming down. Uh, if there's any cars coming down, it basically gets stuck and there's no solution to that. Uh, but one of the cars had to back down or back up. But uh, so uh, we got uh, we, we got a confirmation that uh, uh, our clearance that no car is coming down our way. So uh, we are now going up. It is so narrow, the road. So right now uh, we're at the highest village of uh, uh, Udong Mountain. This village is called the Hutsuns, basically means the lake village. Uh, and as you can see, there are only a few households here. Uh, a rough count tells me it's about you know less than 10 households. They say it's about 8 or 9. And uh, I want to show you, this is really dangerous. A lot of, there are a lot of uh, newly uh, uh, cultivated tea uh, farms here. Let's see over here. Uh, I feel like it's it's going to be like Taekwanyin. This is really really bad because you do not want uh, over cultivated mountain. Uh, it's gonna uh, deprive the land here and then they change the ecosystem. It's it's not good. So uh, in, yeah, you want you want tea trees to grow among other trees. You do not want a mountain of just tea trees. Uh, you can see uh, over here. Uh, I have to point out that it's kind of sad that uh, over here in Udong Mountain because the tea's been setting really, really well. And uh, there's definitely the problem that uh, Taekwanyin is having right now, which is over cultivating. Once you over cultivate the tea, uh, it actually uh, will ruin the, the soil. Uh, if you only have you know, good tea, it's supposed to grow among other plants, among other uh, trees and stuff. Like th this, this, this kind of environment is good. Now uh, we can see uh, over here, this is, uh, you know, even though it looks like a tea garden, uh, but basically people just kind of uh, flatten the, uh, the ground to make it easier to access. You see, uh, there are lots of the really big tea trees here, and uh, uh, it looks very similar to the poor scene in Yunnan, right? And over here, these trees, even though they're not as big as the big one that we saw up there, but it's still quite big. And uh, over there, you see all the, the new trees, right? You can barely see the tea trees, but they're, uh, the little saplings are growing. Um, so that's gonna, you know, in a few years, in actually many years, it's gonna grow, uh, become the, a real tree like these ones. But it's, uh, uh, right now it's a huge difference in size, the size of the tea tree. And uh, Sanchong, the reason, you know, it's called single tree, the name, uh, I'm not talking about like the name of the category, but the name uh, in the old times, re really, from the very beginning of this tea is people really use uh, every single tree to make the tea. That's why it's called Sanchong, and now it becomes the name of the category. Uh, it, it hasn't officially become the name of the category, but because the market is, uh, is so uh, uh, chaotic, uh, people, uh, just because of lack of information, people do not know that. So they just call everything Danson. But Danson really means a single tree. Now, after uh, over a month, you know, we, uh, uh, we were in Yunnan a month ago, and now we're in Phoenix Mountain. Uh, do you see the scene is a little familiar? People uh, also, uh, the tea pickers are actually on the tree or on the ladder to pick the tea. So uh, we're now again at uh, uh, sort of like a big leaf variety region. Uh, like these teas, you can see uh, it has a very solid, big trunk here. This uh, variety here is uh, Huang Zhixiang, and uh, you can actually uh, take a single tree, uh, Phoenix Ulong, a real Danchong. Remember, uh, Danchong, the name suggests it's a single tree uh, tea even though nowadays it become uh, the name of the category, but the real Danchong is basically you use, uh, you know, single tree to make it, and this tree is so solid and big, it's allowed to do that. You can see the, the moss on there, that's uh, what 
it gives you uh, that oat tree taste. It's this thin taste, and you see, it's it's quite sizable. You know, it's a it's the size of my thigh almost. And there, you can buy here right there. You know, on the letters. <laughs> So uh, this is uh, so remember this is Udo Mountain. Now this is the uh, you know the most uh, uh, expensive Phoenix Oolong area. Uh, it's one of the highest mountain tops in the region as well. So uh, the tea here obviously busts a little bit later. Actually this year it has moved uh, uh, to an earlier date this year. Uh, so usually you know it definitely busts a little later than uh, the teas in the uh, lower elevation. Uh, the last tea that's budding is Ba Xian, and that's what we're picking right now. Uh, so right now, basically, uh, today I think it's the 28th, uh, around uh, May 1st, that's when uh, you know all the teas are basically finished being picked. Uh, so right now, because everybody is in such a hurry, so uh, even if it's tender leaves, it's not it's the standard, because we're still picking them. Ba Xian is also one of the most expensive varieties as well. And uh, this year, uh, was uh, this year the the, the Udong uh, area actually moved up quite a uh, few days. Uh, last year by this time it was still the primary time. Uh, so this year the Anhui area it, it snowed twice during the tea season, and over here the tea season actually moved up, uh, which creates such problem for me because uh, it's uh, it's it's uh, about 15 hour drive from here to the other tea region, and I can't just go back and forth uh, to wait for the tea season to to start. Now I want to show you the picking of oolong. So uh, actually for all teas, the best practice is always to leave one leaf on each of the branch. This will help the tea to uh, bud next year. It hurts the tea the, last, the least. Now uh, some of the wild tea picking people are very rough, kind of violent because it's on public land. Nobody's uh, you know, really claiming the tea. So uh, there's not much care goes into it. And also uh, for oolong tea picking, you know, this is this is a good picking. Uh, actually, it's still a little tender. Now, uh, it's not allowed to use pesticides here. Actually, there's a checkpoint uh, over here. The, this is a little box on there. Uh, you can uh, uh, outside cars vehicles cannot go in here without uh, uh, checking in with the local authorities. So. Uh, the environment here is really, really good. Now for oolong tea, this, they call it the kai mian. So when it was like a zhong kai mian, uh, that's the ideal time to uh, pick oolong teas. So basically when all the leaves actually opened up, even when it's raw, when I touch it, it's very, very sticky. You can see the bug bites on here as well. Now ideally, you do not want to pick the bud. So if this you pick is too tender, the aroma wouldn't come out fully and sometimes it adds a little bitter taste to the tea as well because it's very easy to uh, run into a higher risk of the bud actually dies during the, uh, the whole uh, uh, churning wilting process. Also you want to make sure that you leave in a uh, sufficient amount of stamps here. See now this one the picking has hurt the stamps a little bit. So this is where the water actually travels out. Now uh, of course you know there's going to be water evaporating from the, the surface of the leaves also. But uh, for oolong tea making, it's very, very important for the water to travel out uh, efficiently uh, in a timely manner. And this is basically the, the uh, determining step of the, uh, the oolong tea quality. And you do not want to bend the stamp, you do not want to bend the leaves. So, I don't, so if this way, then you uh, basically lock uh, the channel, then the water wouldn't go out. And that's what gives the oolong tea that stinky green taste, which is uh, not a good thing. Uh, so now uh, this is a batch of uh, uh, single tree bacian in the making. Um, now this is uh, this is going to be one of the most expensive teas this year uh, in China for sure. But what happens is uh, you can see how delicate his hand is. It's definitely uh, very different from making uh, other teas. Yeah. And I don't even want to touch it because you know uh, I'm going to mess it up. And uh, if I mess it up, it's the price is probably going to drop you know a few thousand. So I don't want to do that. So this tree uh, has produced uh, over uh, 20 pounds of fresh leaves and uh, it's going to come out with uh, 5 pounds of uh, dry tea. Yeah.
you can see the making it, the, the picking is different too. I, I hope you, just by looking at it, you can see the, um, you can see the, the picking is much more evenly, and the leaves are very, very soft. And he's uh, first going to repeat the, the whole uh, uh, turning and shaking process five times a day. Now this is uh, the step that what makes oolong oolong uh, is after uh, uh, you sell well the tea, you need to go the tea at room temperature and then uh, he needs to shake and or churn the tea. Uh, about like 7.30 in the morning. And uh, these are the uh, uh, barrel-made Lashinwan last night. So uh, after we let the tea sit overnight, you can see they uh, become like flatter. And over here, on the top two trays, this one, this one, these are the single tree bashi. And the reason that we're covering it up was because the temperature uh, was a little cold. Uh, we want to increase the temperature because otherwise the tea hasn't reached the ideal fermentation level. And over here, these are the, uh, the second generation. I'm going to show you. See, ideally, uh, this is how you want the leaves to look like. It has a. Uh, um, the, we, in Chinese, we call Lu Ye Hong Xiang Bian. So it actually has the. Uh, the green leaf and then the red edges. Uh, overnight, this is what happens to the leaves. Now, the, uh, yeah, definitely became flatter, and uh, we're, I, I hope you can hear the machine uh, turning in the background. Right now, uh, we're stir frying this one, and we're waiting to see when the master determines that this batch is, uh, is ready to be, to be, to be stir fried, and that's the uh, very important kill green steps of the wulong. Uh, now everybody is really excited. We're uh, gonna start to stir fry the single tree uh, at Now I want to show you. Uh, uh, see, I hope you can see the edge of the leaves are all uh, red, but the center stays green. Um, the more common you see the leaves appears this way, the better the tea is. The, I mean, the better the making has become. Basically. Even though uh, there are lots of uh, uh, other stuff happening behind me, uh, I'm there to be here because uh, this batch of single shibashi will come out in a moment. Basically, we see three different levels of attention paid to the tea. 
And remember, this is, this is the best of the true origin already. This is the Udo Mountain area. So, uh, uh, and even here we can see, you know, people pay the, rent, the most attention to the single batch, single tree lentil, uh, and then the people tree, uh, uh, the second, the uh, um, attention to the second generation of Fatia, and then at least attention to uh, the Barrow Road. Uh, distribute the tea even lay on the baking tree by hand. Uh, one thing I want to point out again is uh, I hope you can tell that there's going to be much less yellow leaves in this batch of tea. So from the very picking, it's, uh, it was picked very, very tender. Only, uh, you know, it's, I'm having a hard time actually finding a tea that can potentially become yellow leaf. Oh, this is a, this is a knot, see? And uh, that's why we're breaking up the tea, because otherwise, even though it's a very small knot, and the, the heavy shaking by uh, both hands is gonna find uh, these little small knots. So then afterwards, we need to go into the tea, uh, go into the pile to look for the small little uh, knots. And this one in here, this, actually this one, is, uh, I'm not even sure, this one is gonna, this coloration in tea, but it's not exactly even a yellow leaf. Uh, this special tea is really, really Also over here, uh, I want to show you the differences in the leaves. I really, really hope uh, this phone can capture. See how oily and meaty this one is. This is the single tree bashian. And now, these uh, two... And this one is the, um, sorry, I keep saying Lao Xiong, but it's, uh, last night we actually, uh, Barrow churned this Aishi, remember, uh, thief shit. And this is the second generation Ba Xian. I just want to point out, you know, the differences in uh, the wet leaf appearance. Now, neither, uh, none of the tea was uh, baked yet when we were trying this round. This uh, gentleman here, he needs to uh, prepare the charcoal pit. So right now it's about 9.30 in the morning and uh, he needs to keep it burning till uh, around, uh, uh, like the, till this evening. And uh, that's what's, uh, and then all the uh, fire is gonna go out and it's only gonna have uh, the residual heat from the charcoal. Uh, what's gonna happen is they need to keep this uh, charcoal pit alive for uh, uh, over half a month. Uh, so in Klefti region, we see the very similar step as well. So it's really smoky. <laughs> and uh, uh, then they, they're going to put the tea. Oh, let's, uh, let's take a look inside here. And then basically, you know, this is just empty right now, but they're going to put tea in the bamboo bucket here. I'll show you the inside. It's too dark. We won't be able to see. But they have a, a little tray inside to carry all the tea. And uh, depends on the tea, the tea is going to get roasted for uh, uh, 6 to 12 hours because different tea has different uh, thickness. What's going to happen is not only it's going to keep the aroma of the oolong a little better, it's going to give it a very nice roasty flavor that uh, a lot of traditional oolong has, and also uh, it's going uh, in, to it's going to stick in the texture as well. It's a very very well uh, roasted tea uh, has a like a thicker uh, uh, thicker mouth feel. Uh, sometimes people say uh, it tastes like porridge. I also want to point out, you know, good tea can withstand a lot of roasting. Uh, sometimes, you know, the roasting level also tells you how good or bad the tea actually is. 
那个坐到边上是吧？嗯，动一下那个茶嘛，就掉下去，掉下去它就会，本身就会这样上来。<laughs> it's very important to uh, not touch the tray while the, the tea is on the charcoal pit because any shaking is going to shake any, uh, some dust into the, uh, into the charcoal and that's going to add smoke to the tea. Sometimes when we drink uh, really, really good tea, uh, no matter if it's red tea or green tea or um, oolong, if it takes the charcoal baking step, uh, this is sometimes people drink it and then they'll be like, oh, it has a little smoke in there. That basically means the dust, tea dust, has uh, settled down in the, in the charcoal pit. And the reason they're opening up. This is why we have to so uh, one of the reasons that we bake the tea, of course, you know, the tea has not been completely dry yet. Uh, it's, it's pretty much dry, but uh, it's to uh, uh, stabilize the, the aroma, so the aroma will be get, uh, kept better. And then also uh, it's to drive out any uh, the additional uh, uh, bad aromatic stuff uh, in tea. <laughs> and uh, so you can see the little for the for the the little little for the for the, for the, <laughs> for the tea to uh, for the aroma to go out. And then uh, I also want to show you the see the outer because the tray is flat, so the outer ring is a little higher, and the inner ring is a little lower to even out the the temperature. You must put the inside one a little lower. The outside one a little lower. The inside one a little uh, mm. So uh, um, I was asking uh, how long uh, we need to uh, bake the tea for, and he said that this brings your batch probably for eight hours. Now the fire is very dim, that's why sometimes this final roasting step, uh, the farmers call it stewing the tea. And it's like slow cooking the tea. So the temperature is really low. You know, I can I can touch the tea or anything. It's it's really just like keep it at a very very low temperature. And uh, the tighter the string is, uh, usually the, the longer you want to stew the tea. And also remember the tighter this tea is, usually means that it's stickier. Uh, the picking gets better. And the, the more uh, the flatter the tea is, so the more opened up the tea is, uh, you want to uh, less the baking time. The reason being that. Uh, it's actually uh, the fire will go in a little sooner, right? Uh, versus the tighter ones, it's a little thicker. So uh, you want to make sure that you uh, you give it a little longer time for the baking or for the for the roasting. Uh, so right now, uh, a lot of the uh, rough teas are uh, being finished. So uh, uh, a lot of facilities, we can see that people were actually uh, uh, picking up the stems and the yellow leaves. So you can see this is the. And that this is a really good batch of tea. How uh, how do I know? Because it has much less of the yellow leaves and stems. Uh, I want to show you the. Uh, so this is the the yellow leaves and the stems. And again, this is the uh, this is the byproduct of tea. Okay. And this is the real tea. Uh, this is actually udon shiki. I can smell it. It smells really good. Now let's go take a look at this batch. I don't know if you can tell, but even from the rough tea, this one looks even rougher. It has more yellow leaves and stems. So this is a, you know, just by even by looking at the rough tea, uh, I know that this is of a less less quality than the other one. Uh, not necessarily means you know the making and everything, but usually you know the better the tea is, the the, the, the more careful people actually pick the tea, the more attention people pay to the tea making, uh, and also you know they try to pick tea uh, as much as possible at the most primary time. So with a batch of tea, you have to pick out so much of the uh, the yellow leaves and stems, then it's probably not the best tea. Uh, but e but even though you know like only the top teas in China they go through this process. Uh, it's a very tedious process. They need to continue this process for like about a month, uh, and then they can finish up the tea. So uh, it's very tedious. So finally, uh, uh, the batch of rough tea is done, but uh, he said he's not going to risk it by uh, making it into the final tea 
uh, because you know every more step, especially the baking step, you have the potential to uh, ruin the tea. He's just gonna take it as the rough tea and then uh, and then drink it as rough tea. This is how much? 五斤，五斤，五斤，正好五斤啊，还是？五斤多一点，老板打个折变成五斤。变成五斤，哦、oh, ，so、uh, it's five pounds. It's a little over five pounds, but he said, uh, they count it as five pounds.